the Mox return to Finley Stadium with head coach Tom Art leading the way. We got an opportunity to do something different. You got to do it better than you've ever done it before. You got to communicate better than you've ever communicated before. It's got to mean more to you than it's ever meant to you before. And he ends up touchdown. This opportunity, this moment, today, forward. Right, to give that type of effort every single day. Straight back to throw and sack. You got the opportunity to set the standard for what it means to play at Chattanooga. You're watching Inside Chattanooga Football, hosted by head coach Tom Arth and the voice of the Mox, Jim Reynolds. Inside Chattanooga Football is presented by Allegra, 24 hour relief from indoor and outdoor allergies. Coca Cola, Chattanooga Coca Cola Bottling Company, the world's largest Coca Cola bottler. Welcome to Inside Chattanooga Football. I'm Jim Reynolds and we are at the old Chamberlain Field site. Why? Because it's homecoming on the UTC campus this week, all culminating with that football game Saturday when the Mox take on the Furman Paladins. It's a four o'clock kickoff on Saturday. We all have highlights of the Mox game with Western Carolina from last weekend and also preview both men's and women's basketball. Yes, practice got underway earlier this week. All that and more when Inside Chattanooga Football returns in just a moment. This segment of Inside Chattanooga Football is sponsored by Coca-Cola. Chattanooga Coca-Cola Bottling Company, the world's largest Coca-Cola bottler. Sunshine in 76 degrees here at kickoff at Finley Stadium in Chattanooga. A chamber of commerce type day. Not, a, not too many clouds in the skies today. Plenty of sunshine. Mox have won the toss. They have elected to defer. And Western Carolina will get the ball to begin things. Corey Holloway, and here's Adams to throw. Pressure, and this is where he's dangerous. 35-40, first down, and angled out of bounds at the 45-yard line. Third and four from the Chattanooga 28. Adams, hit, sacked. 48-yard field goal attempt for Will Horton. Ian Berryman will hold. Graham Foster to snap. The kick on its way, and the kick is no good. The 48-yard field goal misses it short and to the right. And again, Parker goes in motion to the bottom of your screen. Benefield will throw. Drops it off. Pass complete. Inside the 40-yard line, down to the 35. Into the field. Now they have it. Or started on their own end of the field. They have it at the Western Carolina 31. Benefield in trouble, and he's dropped. Yeah, he's a guy that, that's very dynamic for the for the, for the Catamounts on offense. Also, in, in the return game, as all-purpose yards, he's a guy that can really make a difference for them. Adams going deep. Stephen Hill made the reception and stays in bounds. Here's Holloway again. This time he is in for the touchdown. Corey Holloway, his fourth touchdown run of the uh, season. They lead UTC 7-0. The quarterback, Tyree Adams. Adams will hand it off to Holloway, and Holloway has got room. Midfield foot race. C.J. Fritz will chase him down from behind inside the 25-yard line. Yeah, right here, good job by number 75, Dalton, getting up, getting up onto the second-level linebacker and allowing Holloway to spring free, getting him out into the open. Big gainer right there, explosive play for Western. C.J. saved the touchdown. Four seconds on the play clock when he gets the snap off. He'll try to run, caught from behind, and pull down. Isaiah Mack. Barriman will hold. Here's Horton with a field goal attempt. This time from 39 yards. He missed earlier from 48. The snap, the kick. And this time, it's good. And Western Carolina has the 10-0 lead over UTC with a minute 59 to go. Coach Spear called him the bell cow of the defense. Bridges <laughs> goes in motion. And oh. Benefield is blasted. Oh, my, Benefield. 
That was to Shea Watt coming from his outside linebacker spot. Nobody laid a hand on him, and he just nails Alejandro Benefield. It all happened so fast, Chris. It looked like the offensive line was in some sort of slide protection there to the right, and there was no left tackle that was supposed to kick back and maybe pick up that defensive end, or it could have been some sort of uh, screen play where the ball maybe was designed to get out of his hands and nothing was there. But Adams on play action. Hit and dropped. Tiano from the goal line. Being pressured, hit, ball is loose, and it's recovered in the end zone by Western Carolina. It's a touchdown for the Catamounts. Once again, right here, Chris, they bring inside pressure with their two middle linebackers. Do a good job beating them. Tache does a good job on the end, working on the right tackle there, getting to Tiano, making the hit, and good job getting on the football for the Catamounts in the end zone touchdown. Tiano on second down and nine. Bagley stays in to block, and Tiano hit from the backside. Ball is loose in the end zone again. Western Carolina says they've recovered, and they call it a touchdown. That is twice that that has happened. Huge play. And coming up with a football is Nate Link, the defensive end. Huge play, Chris. They are over 10 on the season now. After the way they've beaten up the Mox. Here's Brewer. Lost the football. It's loose at the five-yard line. Mox recover it. And now Western Carolina has it. Western Carolina takes over at the one yard line. Squires, a freshman, as Brewer was looking to throw. There's another strip sack. And Western Carolina takes over with a first down and goal at the two yard line. Adams, the give to Holloway. And Holloway is in. Touchdown, Western Carolina. And getting on those blocks. 101 yards for Holloway. Here's Adams looking for six. Caught, touchdown, Stephon Hill. Well, they set it up on the ground, BJ. They pound it, pound it, pound it, and then they throw it over the top, and there's Hill for six. Tiano on a second down and short. Will throw again and can run. First down and more into Western territory inside the 40-yard line. Bailey Lenore in motion. Here's Tiano. The screen. Caught by Bridges. Makes a man miss. 30. 25. First down. 20. And struggles inside the 20-yard line. Daryl Bridges. This time it's a design run. And Tiano to the five-yard line and falls forward. And we've got a timeout for an injured player. And it looks like it's Tiano that's down. Now, if he has to come out, and it will be Dominic Caldwell that will come in. Nick Tiano walking towards the dressing room as Caldwell to throw for the first time. It's caught, reaching for the end zone, and he's in. Touchdown. Daryl Bridges with a touchdown reception. And for UTC, the freshman, Dominic Caldwell. Year in and year out in the SOCON. They got a tough one next week as well. Smith, pass thrown, caught by Mathis. 10-5, five, fighting for the pylon. Touchdown, Western Carolina. Mathis with a touchdown reception and a heck of an effort right at the pylon. And Western Carolina with a 45-7 win over UTC. That win for Western Carolina, their first against the Mox in eight tries. At the end of the day, they're going to make the decision to come to this school because of what this place can do for them because of the opportunities that they're going to have, the experiences that they're going to have. Throws it in the end zone, and that's caught. The league will boot it away. Mox with pressure, and they get the block. And they're going to allow them to go out into the world and to be successful and to be leaders and to make an impact and to make a difference in the world. That's, what, that's what's inspiring to me, and that's what I know that this school represents. That's what I know this football program represents, and that's what I want to keep building on. Honoring all around excellence in men's and women's collegiate competition. Every division, every sport, the Learfield Directors' Cup. The prestigious award continues its reign as the crowning achievement in college athletics. To follow your favorite team, like us on Facebook, find us online and on Twitter. The Learfield Directors' Cup.
Yeah, feeling great. A lot of energy. I think the guys are excited. I'm excited. The staff is excited. So I'm just excited, ready to go. I'm excited to play with this group of girls. We've been spending ever since the end of June working towards this point, and now we're using this and working towards the season. And so it's just an exciting feeling to get in the gym with our new team and um, see how we're going to be this year. And for me, it seems a little different because normally when practice is starting, the seasons and the temperatures are getting drastically colder and different. I mean, it's warm. It's still in it's 80 degrees and we're going to practice today. So I feel a little bit different that way, but uh, just excited about getting going. We're all looking forward to it. Now with the new coaching staff, new players, we got a lot of young guys coming in. I definitely feel the sense of, of a, a new era, a new wave, and I'm, I'm just excited to look forward to that and what the possibilities can be. We have a lot of young players and they're just going to bring a different dynamic to the game. We have the potential to be sound in every aspect of the game. I do think our defense is going to be a little bit better this year. I want to be a, a very disciplined team in our principles and uh, I want to be a team that, that is consistent. I think that we got the capability of being as good as we have been in the previous years. Of course, winning SOCON tournament, that's always our goal, and then um, getting past first round of NCAA tournament. Personally, I just want to win. <laughs> Honestly, I want to be the best player and the best teammate I can be to my teammates, my brothers. I think it'll be fun to watch. I think you'll, you'll enjoy watching the team interact together. And, and how they play for each other. Ultimately, that's what we want to try to get them to do is play for each other instead of playing for themselves. And, and then we all come out on top if we're doing that. This segment of Inside Chattanooga Football is sponsored by Allegra. 24-hour relief from indoor and outdoor allergies. Welcome back to Inside Chattanooga Football. I'm Jim Reynolds along with Mox Head Football Coach Tom Arth. Second straight Southern Conference home game this Saturday, UTC and Furman. First of all, we can say Furman played pretty well on Saturday, didn't they? They sure did. They sure did. They, they're playing really well. They're playing good football and, um, you know, kind of running a, a little bit of a different offense than they've run in the past, and they're executing at a very high level. It's been, it's, it's been you know, interesting to watch. Okay. How about your team? Uh, you know, we, uh, we've got a lot of work to do, um, clearly. Uh, you know, our, our performance uh, last Saturday was, was nowhere near acceptable, uh, you know, in, in all aspects. Um, and, uh, you know, there's nothing we can do but work to improve it. You know, we met with the team on, on Sunday afternoon and we walked out of those doors. It was over and, you know, we were all committed to moving together. Um, you know, in the same direction. Generally, when we're speaking right now, we don't know who's going to be under center, who's going to take the first snap of the game Saturday against Furman. You know, hopefully we'll have some more information tomorrow, um, you know, by, you know, at least, you know, practice time before we go out there to practice. Um, but again, you know, it, we may not, we may not know, you know, fully until Thursday, but, um, you know, I think we'll have a good plan tomorrow with how we're going to proceed um, and, you know, what, we'll, what our intentions will be, you know, going into that game. Dominic Caldwell was pressed into service. Talk about him through the touchdown pass. I'm sure he was excited about that. He was, and, you know, our, our entire team was. And, you know, I think that, uh, you know, Dom came in into a difficult situation, probably had no thought in the world that he was ever going to step foot on the field and all of a sudden to be thrown into it the way he was and um, to finish a drive that was important, you know, from a, from a mental standpoint, a morale standpoint, um, you know, to finish it and, and throw a touchdown pass was uh, really exciting for him and for our team. And Daryl Bridges made a fantastic play um, on the catch and then just to get it in the end zone. Is the disappointing part that you played well against VMI and took a step backward, not just stayed the same, probably a step backward, yes? Yes, um, it's hard to put your finger on it. It's hard to explain. Um, you know, we haven't played well at home. You know, I feel like we've played better on the road. We played, you know, we didn't play great against Jacksonville State. We've certainly played a lot better. We played better against LSU. Um, you know, we played, you know, great against VMI, but we really have played poorly um, at home. And, you know, that's just, 
you know, I, I don't know what the I don't know what the answer is on that, but um, you know, we need to figure it out and um, improve. This is obviously a big weekend with homecoming and uh, a lot of alumni being here, and you know, that means a lot to me. You know, it means a lot to me uh, to make sure that we represent our school and our program the way uh, you know that, that that our alumni expect in a way that they're proud of. Mox and Furman Saturday. That's a four o'clock kickoff Saturday afternoon. We'll have highlights of the game between the Mox and Paladins next time on Inside Chattanooga Football. Inside Chattanooga Football has been brought to you by Allegra, 24 hour relief from indoor and outdoor allergies. Coca Cola, Chattanooga Coca Cola Bottling Company, the world's largest Coca Cola bottler.